What's up, YouTubers? So in continuation with my weld testing, I thought today in my free time we would tackle the question of what's stronger, 6011 or 6013. So that's what we're going to be tackling today. Let's get into it. So we're going to look at testing 6011 and 6013, and we're going to be doing break, weld brake tests and really comparing the two. And this is something that, you know, since I've been in business on YouTube, I've been asked quite a lot of questions regarding like, well, what rod should I use? And I find that in foreign countries, at least AKA out of the United States, a lot of guys only have access to 6013. And that's kind of unfortunate because if you look at all the common rods that are out there, like 6013, 6011, 6010, 7018, 7014, all of that, they kind of all serve a different purpose. And if you don't have access to all of them, or you don't know how to run all of them, you're limiting yourself on capability of what you can do with stick. So it's kind of unfortunate, but I do know in this country, 6013 and 6011 are probably the most common rods you're going to find. And that's why, I mean, we often call them farmer rods because every farmer has them on his farm. <laughs> the, the irony in that is these rods may not be the best choice for welding on crap on a farm because a lot of farm stuff is made out of hardened steel or hard, heat hardenable or alloy steel for wear resistance and these are not the rods you want to be using to weld that but whatever that's a whole nother topic but based on you know pretty much anybody's welder you can run 6013 and 6011 you can run them on ac you can run them on dc they run on old buzz boxes so across this country and likely outside of this country you can run these rods which is why I'm going to do a comparison between these so we can really look at the differences in strength and I can give you a little bit of an idea of why we're going to see differences in that and I can talk about a little bit about why you would use one over the other. So without anything more said what I'm going to do is get set up and weld all of these. So let's get into it. All right, so I finished welding all of them. These two are the 6011, these are the 6013. I used a new rod for each weld. I really didn't need to do that, and I probably shouldn't have. It's somewhat wasteful, but I'll burn these rest of these up in practice today, so whatever. Now, this is not undercut. I don't know if you can even see that on the camera. There is a slag on the toes of the welds on 6011. They call those wagon tracks, but for the sake of what we're doing, I don't need to clean that off. 6013 welded better than I expected. It welded okay. Both rods have a little bit of a blown out corner, and that's simply because I did not tack weld the corners and then weld over it. That's kind of what I've been doing in the videos. If I was going to weld something that needed strength, I would go back and fill this in with weld. But again, for the sake of what we got here, we're just letting it be, I guess. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break two of them. So one from each towards the face, and then we will bend two away from the face and see if there's some differences between the two. So to start things off, we're going to use a 6013 test weld, which I welded that at a buck 20 with eighth inch rod. That's 3.2 millimeter rod for you guys overseas. I don't know why every time I clip this in, sometimes it just shuts itself off, you know. Maybe one day I'll buy a better one in Harbor Freight. All right, let's bust this to the face. We got 44. That's pretty low. All right. Definitely felt weak to me. And here we have 6011. Let's bust this sucker. Eight. 
and we got 68.7. Don't mind the airplanes going overhead. All right, let's go and bust them towards the face. All right, so I got the 6013 all set up and ready here. Before I break this, I'm going to make a prediction. I don't believe that either one of these rods is going to produce a weld that won't snap. I have a feeling that the 6010, or excuse me, 6011 is going to be more brittle, so it's going to more or less crack. This one, I think, will give up after a little bit, but both of them, I don't believe, are going to pass this test. Which is, uh, if you watch my other videos where I've done 7018 and MIG wire and all of that, you're going to see that the higher tensile strength of those fillers will, in theory, do better than both this and 6011. That's one way to clean mill scale off. It just pops right off, right? And I, I think it's tearing already. Maybe not. Wow, this one might not give up, shockingly. There it goes. <laughs> so that actually held on better than the 6010 did, to be honest with you, but it pretty much snapped and dickered off somewhere down below here. So I'll have to find that in a minute. Well, let's get reset up and start doing the 6011. Of course, because I'm an idiot, I welded this backwards. This is a former test plate that I had not welded in the middle and well, Weld it on the end, so I don't think this is really going to affect our test, but it may be a little bit difficult to press it off of this, but hey, it is what it is. Mistakes were made. So let's get bending this sucker now. Keep in mind, a lot of the force you're seeing is just the pressure that it's digging into the plate. It drops a little bit because it's no longer digging into the plate and actually just flattening out. And about right now, starting to just bend the weld. And failure. All right, well, let's go set these up on the table and talk about the results. So here I have the 6011. This is a 6013. You can easily tell because of the ripples. 6013 tends to be pretty smooth. Now, when we do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two, it's very apparent which one has more penetration. Keep in mind, this is 3 8 plate, and I ran 120 amps on this guy, 8th inch rod, and 100 amps with the 6011. But we can clearly see far more penetration on the 6011. If you look here, the most of the original plate edge is all gone, other than maybe a little bit right here. The 6013, quite a bit of the original plate edge, very little penetration there. And that's to be expected. 6013 is not really a deep penetrating rod. The interesting thing is like previous videos, the first like little bit, if you look there, tends to have a little bit of a lack of uh, root fusion there. Same thing here. And that's been the case across the board. And I said it before in other videos, I probably should up my hot start. But the machine I was running it on my Dynasty to weld these, 
either has on or off. If it had adjustable hot start, I would want to boost it up. But yeah, so anyways, looking at these, they both failed, but 6011. And by failed, I mean all of these tests fail for this. But the 6011 was significantly stronger than the 6013. And the simple reason for that is mechanical strength. When you have more penetration into the plates, it's going to pry from back here, and it's going to take a lot more force to tear through that weld. So this, as I expected, failed at far higher strength. So here we have a completely different result, and one that I was expecting in some ways and not in others. So here's a 6010, here's a 6013. When you look at this, we can tell that this 6013 weld stretched quite a bit. It definitely has more ductility than the 6011. But the interesting thing is, is that the 6011, the weld didn't break, but it, the plate did, if you look at that. Now, I've done a number of bend tests so far on this channel, and I've never seen one do this and I have a couple theories as to why and let's talk about this one first. So again these are just theories but when you look in here this weld so the grain structure near this weld it basically broke at the top edge of the weld and some of the weld did actually break. This could have been an issue of undercut on the top it's possible. I didn't really see any, but there was slag covering some of it. So it could have been undercut. But by looking at the grain structure in here, what I think happened is as I welded this, this weld metal became part of an alloy of this filler rod, or well, 6011 filler rod, and the base material. So this whole area that the weld fused and melted into there is now an alloy. 60 11 is nowhere near as ductile as 6013. So this area of this plate became likely far more brittle than up here. Everything started to bend and right at this interface line, so maybe a little bit of undercut hurt it, but it was likely more brittle and then upon putting enough stress on it, the plate broke. Now I thought about redoing this test and running a couple more passes. And you know what, if you guys want me to, I, I guess I will. But I have a feeling that this is gonna be the common theme for breaking with this particular rod. And it has to do, like I said, with the loss of ductility due to this weld alloy mixing in there. It's still interesting. And this actually broke at lower strength than 7018 rod. 7018 was able to be successful in bending this. So I think, like I said, that given stress like we did here, 6011 will break like this and 7018 won't. So is this you know, weaker than say 7018? I would have to say yes, 7018 exceeds the tensile strength of this. This rod will have a failure likely very similar to this or through the middle of the weld. So in the case of what we got going here, it's still a failure, but unexpected. Now, the 6013 broke more or less as I expected. It broke down the middle of the weld. The weld had more ductility without a doubt than the 6011. It stretched quite a bit. The interesting thing is, is that you can see it started peeling away. And let me zoom in for you guys. It actually started peeling the weld off of the plate. Again, I think that has to do with the weld alloy mixing with the plate because I didn't see any visible undercut. I mean, this is just a little bit of slag left on there and it's been stretched. You can see that. Like, there wasn't any undercut. The stress of that started peeling the weld off and had it not just br basically broke in the middle, it would have torn off there as well and likely back into the plate. So interesting result. Both of these failed as expected, just in different ways. So let's go to conclusion. So in this test, we learned a bunch of things, and or at least I did, hopefully you did as well. 
there's stark differences in rods, even though they have the same tensile strength. Like you can't go by tensile strength to guarantee you like weld strength. I mean, in this case, we saw that there's, if you're bending whatever you're welding towards the face, you're going to want out of these two rods, 6011. If you're going to bend away from the face, either one of them, they're going to do about the same. They're both likely going to fail, whereas your 70 series rod 7018 will likely pass. Same thing with MIG and obviously TIG. So it's something to think of. Now, the question is, how relevant is this to what you're doing? Well, it really depends. Say you're welding on uh, chain pockets on the side of a trailer. If I only had these two rods to pick from, I would pick 6011. The reason is it's easier to weld uphill and out of position. It has more penetration. And say you had, like the chain pocket looks something like, uh, like this, okay? Welding this vertical up with 6011, if you ever hit this or clip something, this is going to bend. I mean, don't get me wrong, the 6011 weld might break, but if you ever bend anything like this way against the face of your weld, it's going to hold up far more with the 6011 and the 6013. Where the 6013 rod really comes in handy, in my opinion, is it's far less aggressive than 6011, so welding thinner material, it's a better rod for that, and it's a better rod to learn to weld on because it's a little bit easier. But ultimately, both of these rods saw failures on the brake test away from the face. They're both weaker than 7018. I will be testing 7014. Don't trust me on that. I will get to that. So are these rods I would want to run? Well, I generally use 6010 and 7018 for almost everything and occasionally 7024. I don't really run much 6011 or 6013. I definitely don't run. But if you got an AC buzz box, both of these are, are viable options. So I'm not trying to put you down if you got limited equipment. I'm just trying to inform you on what your options are. So with more limited equipment, I would say that I would rather run 6011 for most jobs. And if it's thinner metal, I would use 6013. I think you're going to get the performance uh, just overall is going to be better with 6011, in my opinion. But, you know, your guys' opinion matters. So if you think differently, feel free to leave in the comments. Beyond that, thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you learned something. I definitely did, and I can't wait to do uh, some more comparisons because I got a lot more coming regarding this that we can all learn from. So, th again, thanks for sticking around. Until next time.